Hello and welcome to the basic sensor training. I'm Tom and this is Lisa. We're your virtual trainers and will guide you through the training video. Throughout the video, we will explain basic principles and summarize important information. At the end of some sections, you will also have the opportunity to test what you've learned by answering questions. In this training, you'll become familiar with the different types of sensors and learn about the most important measuring principles. You'll also learn much about the design and applications of the individual sensors, as well as the respective advantages and disadvantages. But first, we'll take a look at the portfolio of sensor products offered by Burkert. These products are manufactured primarily at the Trimbach factory in the Alsace region of France. The products are divided into five areas. Flow, Level, Analytical, Pressure, and Temperature. In addition, there are devices with control functions. In the basic sensor trainings, we'll focus especially on flow sensors, level sensors, and analytical sensors. There's a separate video for each of these areas. During the course of this video, we'll provide you with detailed information on the advantages, disadvantages, measuring principles, etc. Before we embark upon this subject, however, we first have to answer the question, what is sensor technology? Sensor technology is a generic term for measuring devices and can be divided into two primary components, sensors and transmitters. The terms transmitter and electronics are virtually identical in meaning and are used synonymously throughout the video. The sensor determines the measured quantity by means of various physical or chemical processes and the transmitter converts this measured quantity into measured values which it presents in the display in the corresponding physical units and outputs as standard electrical signals. The transmitter can be designed as a unit mounted directly on top of the sensor, which is also referred to as a compact version or as a separate unit called remote version, in which case the transmitter is connected to the sensor by means of a cable. For selecting the sensor technology to be used, there are several general criteria, which we will now describe in more detail. First of all, there are mechanical criteria, such as pipe diameter, design specifications for applications from the food and pharmaceutical industries, which at Burkert are part of the hygienic processing segment. The dimensions and weights of the sensors, the process connections, and the design of the individual units. Also important are the input and output signals and the voltage supply. The decisive factors here are the choice of electrical connections and the availability of the I.O. signals with respect to type, quantity and functionality. A low start of the measuring range, a high measuring span and the measuring accuracy are just as important. Other very important criteria are based on the process conditions which the sensors have to fit. Media properties such as temperature, chemical properties, conductivity, viscosity, etc. as well as operating pressure, ambient temperature and the protection type all play a decisive role. The next important criteria for choosing the right sensor are the certifications required by specific applications, industries or countries. In the water treatment segment, for example, a cold water certification or a DVGW approval may be necessary. In hygienic processing, on the other hand, Approvals by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, or the European Hygienic Engineering and Design Group, EHEDG, are important. An example for country-specific approvals is the GOST approval for countries such as Russia and the Ukraine. 
Other applicable approvals include X approvals for use in potentially explosive areas or NEMA 4X. Integrated digital communication is also an increasingly important feature. For example, I.O. Link, Heart, Profibus, and Foundation Field Bus. In addition to the sensors, Burkert also offers suitable controllers for simple control functions like a timer-based activity up to dosing and filling as well as implementing control circuits. Examples for these kinds of devices are E-Control Type 8611, Multicell Type 8619, and MX Control Type 8620. However, these devices are not described in the video. Join us on an excursion into the exciting world of flow measurement technology. Enjoy. The applications for flow sensors are diverse. They're used primarily in the Burkert segments of hygienic processing, water treatment and cooling systems. One of the main areas of application for flow sensors is the treatment of drinking water in the water treatment segment. The goal here is to filter viruses and bacteria, heavy metals and arsenic from the water. Flow sensors are also used to control the cooling of production tools. Optimal cooling not only optimizes the efficiency of new machines, but also increases the efficiency of die casting tools. Flow meters in this area are mainly used as system-capable components, Transmitter and sensor are directly built into a pipe system without a separate fitting. The last area of application we want to examine for flow sensors is dosing and mixing. These processes are used in the segments of water treatment and hygienic processing, as well as cooling systems, however under very different process conditions and application focuses. In hygienic processing, for example, special application conditions, materials, process connections and approvals are required. Precision, reliability, repeatability and flexibility are also very important factors. What about the product portfolio for flow measurement? Flow measurement at Burkert includes sensors with several different measuring principles. The paddle wheel, of which there are two design lines, inline and insertion. The oval gear and ultrasonic and electromagnetic inductive flow measurement, in short, EMF. These flow meters are subdivided into two lines, insertion and full bore. We'll now examine each of these measuring principles more closely. Let's start with a paddle wheel principle. The sensor is available in several sub-principle versions, Hall effect, coil, optical, or mechanical paddle position signal detection. A paddle wheel flow meter consists of an electronic circuit, the sensor, and the fitting, which is available in insertion and inline versions. Both the inline and the insertion fittings are available in different materials and with different process connections. We'll now show you a selection of different combinations of materials and process connections, such as stainless steel with welded connection, brass with internal threads, 
Stainless steel with internal threads. Stainless steel with a clamp. And PVC with external threads. Insertion means that the paddle, which is built into a finger, is immersed in the fluid to be measured. In the inline variant, the paddle is mounted directly on the fitting. Transfer of the measuring signal to the electronics is contactless, for example optical or magnetic. The primary sensor element, a bearing mounted paddle wheel, is therefore directly within the fitting and is set into rotation by the flowing fluid. Besides the standard design, there are variants, such as for high temperature, or X versions that are approved for use in explosive areas. The electronics are mounted on the combined fitting and sensor element. There's a compact version, for example. Alternatively, it's possible to connect the unit to remote electronics. For the remote version, there's the option of wall mounting or panel installation. Now we come to paddle wheel insertion. For the insertion model, a different fitting is used, which is equipped with a neck attachment for mounting of the sensor, which consists of a finger and the paddle wheel on the bottom end of the finger. In this version, the compact unit is screwed together with the fitting. The electrical connection of the electronics is available via an M12 connector or a cable gland. Depending on the application, it's possible to use models with a display and function keys or blind versions without a display and function keys. The easily extractable display, which includes upload and download capability, can be used for several different models. You're probably curious about how paddle wheel sensors work. The paddle wheel is in a pipeline and is driven by a flowing medium. It's important to know that measurement is possible only above a specified minimum flow rate, since a certain force is needed to set the paddle wheel in motion. The paddle wheel rotation is captured by Hall effect, coil or infrared sensors and is converted by the electronics into a flow rate proportional rectangular frequency signal or a standard 4 to 20 milliampere signal. If using a Hall effect sensor, the paddle wheel is made of plastic for example, PVDF or PP. A permanent magnet is cast into each of the four paddles. The paddle wheel rotates on the wear-resistant ceramic spindle, and a Hall effect sensor detects the magnetic field of the rotating paddle wheel. For each 360-degree rotation of the paddle wheel, four signals are generated. The electronic circuit converts the signal to a rectangular frequency. The customer can define how many pulses are output for each volume unit, per liter for example. The flow measurement with a paddle wheel and Hall effect sensor is suitable for clean, aggressive and hot media. The medium should contain no hair or fibers since they can hinder the paddle wheel or bring it to a standstill. Ferromagnetic particles in the medium should also be avoided. In the next flow measurement principle, the paddle wheel is made of stainless steel. Due to the very low iron content, the paddle wheel is not magnetized. Outside of the medium area, in the electronics housing, there's a high temperature coil with permanent magnets. The magnetic field of the coil opens or closes alternately due to the rotation of the paddle wheel. This produces a sinus-shaped frequency signal in the coil, which is converted by the electronics into a rectangular frequency signal. 
This method is used especially for media with temperatures up to 160 degrees Celsius. The disadvantage is the higher start of the measuring range and the higher price. Also, the presence of ferromagnetic particles in the medium rules out the use of this measuring principle. In optical signal detection, the paddle wheel is made of plastic. The electronics housing is outside of the medium area, directly above the sensor. It contains two infrared transmitters receivers, which are separated from each other by an infrared impermeable plastic. These two infrared transmitters receivers detect the rotation of the paddle wheel, and the integrated electronics convert the reflected infrared signals into a rectangular frequency signal. In this version, four positive pulses are again measured for each rotation. The customer can configure the signal output to a desired ratio of pulses per volume, for example, liters. Burkert also offers this in a pre-configured version. This measuring method allows the flow measurement of media containing ferromagnetic particles and also detection of the flow direction. However, this method cannot be used for fluids that can form an infrared impermeable coating. Also, deposits on the paddle wheel should be avoided because this can have a severe effect on the reflection behavior. Another important factor in the use of infrared signal acquisition is not to have any intense light sources in the direct vicinity of the sensor, since that can interfere with or completely prevent the detection of the reflected infrared signals. The next process uses a paddle wheel in the form of a single paddle, which includes a permanent magnet. The paddle is mounted so that it can move in the direction of flow. If no medium is flowing, the paddle is in vertical position. If a certain flow rate is exceeded, it tilts in the direction of flow and switches a reed contact. In this case, there's no measurement, only the presence of a flow is detected and signaled. An adjusting screw makes it possible to set the switching point to different flow rates, therefore allowing adaptation to the respective application. The output is available in the variants normally open, NO, and normally closed, NC. A flow rate greater than the set value closes or opens the contact. This method is suitable for pure switching processes in clean fluids. Due to the encapsulation of the magnet and the electronics, it can also be used in aggressive media. However, this method can be used only for detecting a flow and not for measuring the flow rate. To conclude our discussion of the paddle wheel, we should mention the general advantages and disadvantages of the paddle wheel measuring methods. There are many advantages to using paddle wheel sensors. They require very little energy in comparison with other measuring principles and are cost effective with respect to purchase price and maintenance. The compact dimensions and the modular design make the inline units system capable. Another plus is the uncomplicated and simple measuring principle, which results in high flexibility with respect to functions, materials, and signals. An advantage that should not be overlooked is that the measurement is not dependent on conductivity. Disadvantages of this measuring method include the fact that there are moving parts in the measuring pipe, the measuring accuracy is not very high, and the start of the measuring range is higher than with other methods. Detailed information on measuring accuracy will be provided in a later section. Now you have the opportunity to review what you've learned. Simply answer the following questions. Lisa, do you know which segments sensors are used in primarily? Of course. Sensors are used primarily in the segments of hygienic processing, water treatment and cooling systems. Tom, can you tell me the different types of measuring methods available for the paddle wheel sensor? 
The sensor is available as a Hall effect sensor with a coil, optical signal detection and as a single paddle version. Now that you've learned quite a bit about flow measurement with a paddle wheel, we'll now examine flow measurement with oval gears. How are these devices designed? Flow meters with oval gears use an inline fitting where the oval gears are located. An electronic circuit with or without a display is mounted on the fitting. As an alternative to this compact unit, a version with remote electronics is also available. The electrical connection is implemented with an M12 connector or a cable gland. But how does a flow meter with oval gears work? As already mentioned, there are two meshing oval gears in the fitting, which are set into motion by a flowing medium. Each oval gear conveys a medium from the inlet to the outlet, forming a closed chamber. For each rotation of the rotor, four times the chamber volume is conveyed between the oval gears and the body. To measure the rotary movement, a permanent magnet is attached to each oval gear. In an electronics housing outside of the medium area, there's a Hall effect sensor, which measures the magnetic field of the oval gear and generates four signals per rotation. The electronic circuit generates a rectangular signal. The number of pulses is directly proportional to the number of conveyed chamber volumes. Flow measurement with oval gears is ideal for viscous media such as adhesives, honey or oil. The measurement is not dependent on the conductivity. The disadvantages of this measuring method are the moving parts in the measuring pipe, the high minimum flow rate required to create the movement and the very high pressure drop. Now we come to electromagnetic inductive flow measurement, or EMF for short. There are two variants of this method, insertion and full bore. Both are based on the same measuring principle, but are very different with respect to the setup. The features of the two versions will be described in more detail in the following section. But first, let's take a look at the design of these sensors, starting with the insertion variant. The sensor is combined with a fitting SO20, which is available in a wide variety of materials and connections. For example, with a brass internal thread. PVC with external thread connections. A stainless steel clamp connection. A PP quick release connection a stainless steel flange or a stainless steel welded connection. The electronics with the attached sensor are mounted on this fitting in the same way as for the insertion paddle wheel. The compact unit is available with and without a display. A remote version is also available. The electrical connection uses M20 cable glands or terminal strips. The EMF full bore version consists of a fitting with diverse connections and various materials such as painted steel with an adapter flange connection, polished stainless steel with external threads, painted steel with a flange connection, or stainless steel with a clamp. In the full bore version, however, the fitting includes the elements such as the coils and electrodes of the sensor. In other words, they're a permanent part of the fitting. Compact and remote versions are available. 
types SE56 Basic and Blind are available only as a compact version. The electrical connection uses cable glands. But how does this measuring method work? Current carrying coils generate a magnetic field through which a conductive fluid flows. The voltage induced in the fluid is tapped at two electrodes. The measured voltage is a measure for the flow speed of the fluid. The flow rate is then calculated by means of the inner pipe diameter. This basic principle is identical for the insertion and full bore versions. Only the positioning of the coils and electrodes is different. An EMF is suitable for flow measurement of all fluids with a minimum conductivity. This method can also be used for slightly impure media. However, coat-forming fluids, or those having an abrasive effect or contain ferromagnetic particles, restrict the applications. Now let's examine the insertion EMF principle more closely. Two electrodes are inserted on the end of the sensor that are in contact with a conductive medium and an electric coil above the electrodes. The coils generate an alternating magnetic field. As soon as the conductive medium flows through the magnetic field, a current is induced in the medium, which changes proportionally to the flow speed. This means the higher the flow speed, the higher is the induced current and therefore the voltage measured at the electrodes. The electronic circuit converts the voltage signal to standard signals, either to pulses or a 4 to 20 milliampere DC current. The advantages of insertion EMF are the extremely compact design of the device and ease of integration in existing pipeline systems. Another definite advantage for users is that the combined electronics and sensor unit is the same for all diameters, with the exception of one length variant, which makes it very flexible. Disadvantages of this method include the limitation by ferromagnetic particles, the minimum required conductivity of 20 microsiemens per centimeter, and the low measuring accuracy. However, Burkert insertion EMF allow on-site calibration for adaptation to the respective application and so increase the accuracy. Now let's turn our attention to the full bore method. In full bore measuring, also known as full bore EMF, two electric coils and two electrodes are positioned around the measuring pipe. Both coils generate a constant and homogeneous alternating magnetic field in the entire flow cross-section. If a conductive fluid flows through the magnetic field, a current is induced in the medium. Now the voltage can be measured at the two electrodes. The higher the flow speed, the higher is the induced current and therefore the measured voltage. The voltage signal is converted by the electronics to standard signals such as pulses or milliamperes. The advantages of full bore EMF are that this method provides very precise results and that it's suitable for dosing applications. Besides the general limits of application, such as temperatures and pressures, the applications of this measuring method are restricted only by fluids with low conductivity, smaller than 5 microsiemens per centimeter, ferromagnetic particles in the medium, coat-forming fluids, and fluids with a highly abrasive effect. The last measuring method that we'll examine is flow measurement with ultrasound. Burkert ultrasonic sensors consist of a fitting and electronics without a display and are designed as compact units. An M12 connector is used for the electrical connection. How does flow measurement by means of ultrasonic work? In flow measurement by means of ultrasonic, there are two ultrasonic transmitters receivers at a specific distance L in the measuring pipe. 
They both send an ultrasonic signal to the other receiving point. These signals are reflected by two deflecting mirrors located in the center of the pipe opposite the transmitter receiver and are thus directed to the other receiver. The electronic circuit determines the propagation time of the two signals between the ultrasound transmitter and receiver. The propagation time required by the sound wave in the direction of flow is shorter than the time against the direction of flow. The difference in the propagation times is directly proportional to the flow rate. This measuring principle can be used for both conductive and non-conductive fluids. Since there are no moving parts installed inside the unit, the disadvantages and higher maintenance costs associated with moving parts are eliminated. The disadvantage of this measuring method is that it's unsuitable for impure media and media containing air. In addition to the general selection criteria for flow measurement, there are also numerous specific criteria which we'd like to mention. The first criterion is the flow measurement range from the start to the end of measuring, which is different for the different measuring principles. The next specific criterion is pressure loss. Systems for generating pressure are expensive with respect to both construction and operation. Therefore, plant operators are interested in sensors that cause only a small pressure loss. The order of magnitude of pressure losses for flow sensors is shown in the diagram, based on the example of an insertion paddle wheel. The pressure drop primarily depends on the flow speed and on the pipe diameter. Other important criteria are measuring errors and measuring accuracy, which are depicted in the following diagram. This shows clearly that the precision of insertion EMFs is similar to that of ultrasonic sensors, but considerably more precise than that of paddle wheel sensors. The most precise sensors are the full bore EMFs and the oval gear sensors. Further criteria are the pipe diameters and flow quantities. The diagram for selection of the diameter allows the user to determine the required diameter based on his application conditions, the flow speed and corresponding flow rate. One can see the possible flow rate for a given diameter based on the flow speed. Its optimal range of 2 to 3 meters per second is marked by the blue vertical bar. If a user knows the minimum and maximum quantity to be measured, he can use the diagram to find the suitable diameter for the pipeline. It's important to note that below a flow speed of one meter per second, the measuring error is higher. In the case of paddle wheels, this is true even below four meters per second. Also, special functions such as control or dosing and filling can affect the choice of sensors. The special criteria and properties are also listed in the product overview, sensors, transmitters and controllers. Before we end this training video, you now again have the opportunity to review what you've learned. Simply answer the following questions. Lisa. Can you tell me the different measuring principles used for flow measurement with Burkert devices? Of course. The measuring principles that are used are the paddle wheel, oval gear, ultrasonic and electromagnetic inductive flow measurement. Tom, which measuring principle is suitable for viscous media such as adhesives, honey or oil? Flow measurement by means of oval gears is ideal for this application. Lisa, do you also know the measuring principles in which there are no moving parts in the pipeline? There are no moving parts in the pipeline in the case of electromagnetic inductive flow measurement and flow measurement with ultrasound.
Now we've reached the end of our training. If you missed something, just watch the video again at your leisure or have a look at the product overview, sensors, transmitters and controllers. The overview contains a list of the products. Further details can be found in the corresponding data sheets and operating manuals, which are available for download on the Burkert website. Would you like to learn more about sensors? If so, watch the two videos on analytical and level sensors. These videos are loaded with more interesting and helpful information about sensors. If you have any questions or suggestions, please send an email to technical.training at burkert.com. We look forward to the opportunity to greet you in the next training video. Thank you and goodbye.